I have never had such pain. Well, I keep telling you, Nick, why don't you go in the dentist and have him yank it out? Well, maybe it don't have to be yanked. Well, then what's it ache for? Well, this bad weather always sits in that bad tool. Well, now, look, we're here. It won't take but a minute to go in and have it yanked out. Toothache medicine. Oh. Give me a whiskey. Beer. I ain't got a toothache. They all have the same. How's it feel? Mm. Well, now that the whiskey's got it numb, won't you go have it yanked? You won't feel a thing. <laughs> yeah, you gentlemen look in the prime of life and physical fortitude. Now, how'd you like to earn an easy five dollars? Doing what? Practicing the manly art of self-defense. Test your strength and prove your skill. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, the Boston Terriers. Yeah. Which one are you? Well, me neither. Terrence O'Rafferty, manager and trainer of Jack Kilbane, who once stepped into the ring with the immortal John L. Sullivan. Really? Yes, gents. The fight of the century, sponsored by the Stockton Club at $50 a ticket. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, bare knuckle fight to the finish. Oh, it'll be the biggest private boxing match ever held west of the Mississippi. Mark is a queen, but it knows that's no gouging or biting or yeah. kicking, eh? Yeah. Now, are there any men among you that would like to earn five dollars as a sparring partner? And the first man that stays three rounds with Jack Kilbane wins this here gold piece, eh? Oh, now, surely there must be some among you that have done some fighting. You can't all be lacking in the qualities of manhood. There you go, Nick. You get your tooth knocked out, earn five dollars, and save a trip to the dentist. <coughs> Heath, when are you going to learn you're not funny? Oh, he talks. And, and I thought your friend was deep and dumb. No. <laughs> Give me another shot. How about that, Nick Barkley? You're always stomping and throwing your weight around. Well, now, why don't you mind your own business, Jonas? You just happen to be a little bit sore because I fired you off the ranch. Will I do the same thing again if I ever see you put a club to a horse? And don't you ever forget it. Ooh. Now, here's the man offering you a fight. How about it? Oh. <laughs> it, 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 it. <laughs> Didn't want to start no arguments. <laughs> if Stockton doesn't have a man to go three rounds with Jack Kilbane, I'll just keep me gold piece. <laughs> we'll send to Sacramento. For some men. Well, I guess it's up to me, Nick. Where'd I sign up? Well, now, what do you want to do that for? What do you want to fight for? I used to box on the army. What do you get for it? You get your brains knocked in while some Yahoo watches. Well, it might be a shame to turn the man down. People might think there ain't no pride here in Stockton. Pride? Besides the ideal of a Barkley knocking out the great Jack Kilbane, that kind of tickles me. Right here? Mm. Now, wait a minute. Anybody's going to fight in this family, it's going to be me, Nick Barkley. Oh, fine, fine. I'll see you at Brown's Warehouse in 20 minutes. It's gone.
Now, Nick, I was just having fun. I tricked you into this. Now, let's get out of here. I signed up. Well, they can get somebody else. That guy's nobody to fool with. There we go. There we go. Easy. Up. Ah. Well, uh, thank you very much, my friend. But I'm afraid you don't win the five dollars. It's three rounds you got to stay. Three. <laughs> That's what. All right, Mr. Barkley, you're next. Now, let, let's see what you can do. Well, uh, he hits pretty hard. Uh, I may not be able to be much competition. You wouldn't be trying to back out on me now, would you? I mean, uh, no, no, no. Nick, you don't have to prove anything. Use your head. Can't use my head. Marcus of Greensbury rules you can't butt a man. Can't use my head. Jack Kilbane. Uh, Nick. Nick Barkley. There's my brother Heath. Heath Barkley. Mr. Rafferty, you, you met Heath. Have you ever fight before? And me? Uh, no, well, just uh, army tournament stuff. Nothing too much. And hey, mister, hmm? I'd like you to try to box Jack. Yeah. Make a move at you. Yeah. Well, no, no, don't be trying to take him out with one punch. Oh, no, no. Oh, that way you may last a few rounds, right. eh? Right. Now, Jack, I'd like you to move around a bit. Hold up on a punch. Make it last a little while. Yeah, sharpen up your timing. You need it, eh? Oh, yeah. That's pretty good punching, cowboy. I get even better. Nick, that's enough. Now you're gonna come to me. You better get the seat of your pants ready then, cowboy, because you're gonna be sitting down. Come on. Now, isn't that enough? You stay out of this, Heath. Uh, oh, Kilbane. I'm gonna get you with one of these if it's the last thing I do. Next, cowboy? No, thanks. Rafferty, I've had it for one day. I think I've had plenty. I don't know about you. Stockton Cowboys, I've killed they. Take it easy. It, it was a fluke. I knew this would happen. I knew it. Those two fights with Sam Driscoll. Get pounded bad. Get, get out of the way, will you? No, no, take it easy, Jack. Just take it easy. Here we go. I, I gotta finish the fight. He sent you over a lucky one. No, 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 no. I quit. Besides, you, you had me out of my feet. No, don't worry about me, Cowboy. Just hit my bad side. Turn out the lights for a minute. It'll go away. I don't want to intrude in your business, mister, but I think he better be checked by a doctor. Right. Me? Yeah, you. I've been fighting since I was 15 years old. Oh, watch it. Hey. Yeah. Now, we're going down to see Dr. Marar. He's just down the street. Now, I don't want any nose. OK. Now, me, you get back to the ranch. I'll be there as soon as I see if he's all right. Right. Doc, I tell you, I can see as good as anything. Oh, well, you just quiet down, stop arguing. Now, follow my hand with your eyes. No, 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 don't. Don't move your head. Oh. 
How much has he been hit on that side? Who knows? Sucks at over a hundred fights. Could always take a punch. No, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know, Rafferty? I'm thinking of Sam Driscoll. He could hurt you bad. He never saw the day. Now, let me explain what has happened. A blood clot is very probably formed and is causing pressure there inside your head. Well, how come I feel okay then? Well, listen, I could go out there right now and. Shut uh, up! Who's the doctor here? Him or you? I know how I feel. If it's a blood clot, there's every chance it'll go away and you'll be as good as ever. But I'm telling you this if you ever fight and get hit there, that blood clot can move, not dissolve. and you'll be dead. How do you know? Can you see inside my head? No, Mr. Kilbane, I can't. But I know something about concussion. We'll cancel the fight. Cancel a fight? After I put up the guarantee, every red cent I've got. Jack, it makes no difference. You've got to quit now, right now. Shut up, Rafferty. Quit talking like an old lady. There's a man in San Francisco who knows more about these concussions. Get him. Oh, wait a minute. I got no money to pay for any doctor from San Francisco. I'll pay for it. Get him. In a pig's eye, you will. I pay my own bills. Now, get out of the way. Jack, you've got to listen. Look, I know we're broke, but quitting's better than putting your life on the line. Think of Mary and Johnny. I'm fighting Sam Driscoll. And you're fighting him alone. I'm taking the next train back to New York. I'll have no part of you getting yourself killed. OK, Rafferty. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go walk out on me. I, I don't need you. But you're looking at the picture of your pa in there, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> Is he in? Pop's sleeping. He's oh. in training right now. And... Hello. Oh. I'm Mrs. Kilbane. Oh, Mrs. Kilbane. Well, may I speak to you a minute, please? Uh, I'm Nick Barkley. I'm the man responsible for your husband being hurt this afternoon. Hurt? Yes. He didn't tell me anything. Oh, I, I see. Well, uh, well, uh, well, won't you come in? Yeah. Johnny, I, I want you to take this downstairs and get a newspaper for your father for when he wakes up. All right, then. Well, where was he hurt? In the left hand side of his head, where Driscoll hit him before. Doctor says if he fights again, well, well, he could be hurt pretty badly. Oh, dear God. Well, you've got to make him quit. And if you're worried about the guarantee money you put up, there is a way of getting that back, you know. I, my brother's a lawyer, and... I'm not looking for a lawyer, mister. Well, the doctor said you're in no condition to fight. I'm in good enough condition to throw you out of that window. Now get out of here. Jack, honey, you didn't tell me anything about getting hurt. If a doctor told you to quit, then Mary, what? Mary, since we're talking over family business in front of strangers, I'll make you a promise. After I beat Driscoll, I'll quit. Now, you can put Johnny in school like you wanted to, and we'll settle down. But don't ask me to cancel this fight. Now, what good is that going to do if what the doctor says is true, and you get killed? I've had over 140 fights. Nobody's killed me yet. And one lousy punch almost did it today, and it was my lousy punch. And I don't happen to like that. Well, what do you want me to do, crawl on my belly? Ask a brother for a job at a saloon tending bar? You seem to be more worried about yourself and your wife and your son. You take on a lot of nerve, cowboy. Just because you landed one lucky punch. All right. All right. Well, you take a job. That is, if you're not afraid of work. Jack, listen to him, please. We got an empty house on the ranch. You can live there and earn a very decent wage. Oh, I'm not a ranch hand. Well, at least take it until you decide. You don't have to give up anything. You can go on training. Now, ranch work is the greatest builder in the world. 
Keep her really in shape. Jack, please. If you want to give it up later, you can. Go back to what you want to do. You can go back to fighting. But give it a try. Hi, Pa. I brought you the paper. Say, you ought to hear all the people in town talking about you. The way you fought Sailor Haggerty and Sullivan and... I'll, uh... I'll be expecting you, huh? Ma'am? <laughs> What's going on, Pop? Well, we're going to go live on a ranch for a while, so... Just step up on your horse. We gotta pull some cattle out of the hills, all right? All right. Uh, Kilbane. Uh, uh, Kilbane. Kilbane. You might have a little more luck if you try the other side here. This side over here. Oh. Jack. The, the, the rain. Jack, wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Wait a minute. Give your horse to Hank here. Let him put him up. You go on over to the blacksmith shop. See if he needs some help. I think he does. All right? Uh, right over there. Did you ever shoe a horse? <clears throat> well, I uh, can't say I have. <clears throat> There's nothing to it. Tell you what, take this and clean the hoof off and get it ready for trim. Tap him behind the leg. He'll lift it. Hey, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Next time I may tap him on the nose. Uh, you stand still, Plaster. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Jack, I should have told you you have to hobble a cow before you milk her. Well, I'm not a milkmaid, Nick Barkley, nor a farmhand. I'm a fighter. No, 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 wait a minute. There's no reason to get upset. Cows are like some fighters, you know. You gotta outwit them. Now, you're not gonna let a cow beat Jack Kildane, now, are you? Not without a good fight. Oh, hello, Mrs. Barton. 
Henry, Mr. Kilbane. Hardly. I hope your family likes pears. Our trees were loaded this year. Do you know we put up almost a hundred quarts? Oh, that's very kind of you, but I don't have any fruit jars. Let me bring you some. Oh, thank you. We don't need it, Mrs. Barkley. I mean, you've made one small mistake. We're not charity cases. Jack, please. Well, I mean, living in this house rent-free is bad enough, but if it's, if it's pears Mary's after, she can wait till after the fight and buy them. Oh, Mr. Kilbane, you don't understand what neighbors mean to each other and what they do for each other in this part of the country, but perhaps you haven't lived out here long enough. Mrs. Barkley, everything my family owns, I earned with ease. I don't owe anybody anything, and I've never taken any handouts. And I'm not about to change. Well, I'm sorry if I offended you. Mary? Mrs. Barkley, thank you. Jack, how can you be so bullheaded? You better sit down and eat your breakfast, son. Uh, you too. You're not going to grow if you don't eat. You're not sick, are you? Johnny? What's the matter with you? Pop, how come you hang around here doing ranch work? Are you going to quit the fight? <laughs> Johnny, that's... Where'd you get such a notion? I rode in town with Mr. Barkley, and some of the people were talking. They said you were going to. <laughs> You're all mixed up, son. Well, that's the silliest story I ever heard. Me quit? <laughs> Jack, if you don't tell him, I will. Tell him what? About the doctor. What doctor, Pop? Mary, you don't know what you're talking about. Jack, the doctor said... Mary, he wasn't serious. Only a woman wouldn't know he was joking. Pop, is there something wrong? No, no, no. The doctor said something about my head, but he was kidding. As a matter of fact, I'm in such good shape, he was going to put a bet on me himself. Now, you eat your breakfast. Well, I, uh, I guess I better be getting to work. You're lying to Johnny, to me, to yourself. Mary, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with me. Jack, is that the truth? <gasps> oh, Jack, don't be wrong. Please. Oh, please don't be wrong. a job loading wagons. What are they paying you? Two bits a day? <laughs> <laughs> Sweeping out barns and milking cows. Finally found your proper calling, eh, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you still got the same big mouth, haven't you, Driscoll? 
Hey, I hear you're backing out of the fight. Puts them out of you. Scared? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, those jobs are so hard to find. Maybe I can put a word in for you. Sweeping out saloons. <laughs> <laughs> we can put your kid out in the street dancing for pennies. <laughs> Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! There's no money in street fighting. Well, what about it, Kilbane? You're gonna back out? All right, Jack. Come on, I just want to get you riled up now. Come on. Well, that's where you were wrong, Driscoll. You're gonna get all the fights you can stomach. Where's Flaherty, his manager? He had to leave town. <laughs> Come on, everybody! The drinks are on me! Come on, Oh, well, we better get our stuff. We're gonna be moving back into town. We got a lot of training to do. fork. Matter of fact, you can't see anything from that side now, can you? Get out of here with your tricks, will you? I got a fight to train for. Jack, if there was a chance to get out of this, would you take it? Out of what? Don't play dumb with me. You're not in this thing to win. You're in this to get your guarantee money back. Because you don't have the train for her to send your wife and boy back to New York. I'm fighting because I'm a fighter. All right. If there was a chance to get that guarantee money back, would you take it? Driscoll would see me dead before he'd give me a nickel. Huh? Well, what about widow's money for Mary, in case that uh, blood clot all of a sudden decides to break loose? Get out of here. You, you got nothing to say to me. All right, all right. One way to get that guarantee money back is that someone shows up in that ring, right? Yeah, that's right. All right. I'll fight Sam Driscoll. You? Yeah, me. You don't belong in the same ring with him, cowboy. More than you do. You still got that blind side. Well, just don't worry about me, eh? Come on, come on, get in the buggy, son. Jack, why don't you stay here and train? We can fix up a little place in the barn. Besides, your wife Mary and your son here, they like the house pretty well, don't they? Keep your favors and get out of my way. Now, now, wait a minute. You need a manager, you need someone to train with, and I'll do it for Rafferty's 10%, all right? You? A uh, fight manager? Mm-hmm. Oh, now, come on. I've, I've followed the fight game since I was, well, as small as this one here. And, uh... Well, besides, where else could you find such a great sparring partner, huh? Huh? Well? Up. Uh, it's fine with me. Soak your hands in salt water? Yeah, Brian, thick enough to pickle a hog. 
One split knuckle would be the end of it, you know. Yeah, don't worry about that. All right, start punching this bag. Make believe it's Driscoll. Keep punching until I tell you to quit. Go ahead. Want a break, stranger? Yeah, I'll break. Never thought we'd be going out of the ranching business, did you, Heath? You lose a good foreman, things are bound to go right downhill. I mean, like if he gets interested in other things so that the South Pasture well doesn't get dug out and the busted Pentig stays busted. Yeah. Nine and 15. Very sloppy, but effective. Funny a man raised on a ranch suddenly loses interest in it. Yeah, you'd think managing a ranch would be enough managing for any man. Very funny, boys. So I'm going into the prize fight business. Well, now, don't you think for one minute that I can't handle this ranch, too? And I wouldn't worry too much about Kilbane, either. His doctor is getting him an instrument that uh, can tell whether the blood clot is still there. Nick, we're not worried about the ranch or Kilbane. We're worried about you, Nick. Maybe you're getting in too deep. And if something happens to Kilbane, you're going to blame yourself. Anyway, all we're trying to tell you is that no matter how deep you get, we're in it with you all the way. Well, now, why didn't you say that before? We just did. Step aside. <laughs> What were you doing? Uh, uh, reflexes. Uh, I was seeing if I was uh, dropping my shoulder or carrying my chin too high. Well, why were you moving your hand in front of your face? Well, I told you, Mary, reflexes. Is that all? Uh, honey, Nick's waiting to take me to the Jack. fight. I don't want you to fight Driscoll. Mary, I told you, it's for you and Johnny. It's the last time. I don't want you taking chances with your life. You tell Nick to call the fight off. Don't ask that. I am asking it. And if you don't, I'm going to take Johnny and go to my sister's in Sacramento. Mary, I... I, I mean it. Mary, I haven't got time to argue. But, but you'll see. I'll take Driscoll inside of five rounds. Jack. You know I love you. Then you'll stay? No. Should be back pretty soon. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine. Well, you couldn't be sharper than right now. Just remember, keep that left up. Protect that blind spot, huh? I won't forget. Tell me something. How smart would you say Driscoll was? Driscoll? Mm-hmm. Well, he's dumber than I am. How do you mean? he can kick his grandmother upstairs. <laughs> well, now, if he thought you had a cut, a bruise, or a weak spot, would he go after it? Like a shark smelling blood. Huh. Now, uh, where do you think you could take a pounding the best? The rib cage, huh? All right, now let's just give him a target. I got some stuff in the barn I use for horses that'll raise the most convincing black and blue mark you ever saw. You're a smart cowboy. You might even make a fight manager. <laughs> Be right back. Show him you're scared of that left side, and he's going to pound you there all day. 
Oh, Jack was telling me that uh, Driscoll is like a shark. So we figured we'd give him a little bait. <laughs> was this part of the strategy? Uh-huh. Come on, I'll tell you about it on the way. Come in. I was just about to have some coffee. Oh, no, no thank you. You see, I, I just came to say goodbye. Johnny and I are leaving for Sacramento on the 9 o'clock train. You're leaving before the fight? Oh, yes. Well, can you tell me what's happened? Well, I, I have a sister who lives in Sacramento. Oh, I've been promising to see her. Well, show Johnny off. Oh, she's never seen Johnny. He, he was born in New York. All right, that's not true. I'm leaving Jack. He thinks more of fighting than he does of Johnny and me. Oh, no, Mary, that's not true. It is. Mrs. Barkley, I can't take it anymore. Fighting means more to him than his own life. And I am no good at waiting. Waiting for one good punch from Sam Driscoll or some other fighter. I want to be far away. Well, Mary, distance isn't going to put you far away from him. Why don't you wait until after the fight and have a talk with him and then... No, I've talked. He's made his decision and I've made mine. Mary, it... No, please, Mrs. Barkley. the train station. Looks like she got sense enough to leave a loser. All right, Ben, come to the center. Kill Ben. You've got an injury. There'll be no contest, no fight, and all bets off. Looks much worse than it is. Come on, let's go. What are you trying to do, back out, Kill Bane? Just watch me. Let's take a look. Shut it's all right. Come on, let's go. Well, all right. You fellas know the rules of ever boxing in this country. I want a good, honest, clean fight. There are no gouging in the eyes, no butting with the head, and no blows beneath the belt line. Any questions? Yeah, he fouled me in Tona for Nevada. You gonna watch that? Anyone commits a foul, she'll be disqualified and the purse will be forfeited. Now shake hands, go back to your corners. When the bell rings, come out fighting. Don't try to make any false claims on me. Hey. Hey. This contest is scheduled for 25 three-minute rounds and one-minute rest periods. Under the Marquis of Queensby rules, introducing, in this corner, Jack Kilbane. <laughs> and his opponent, Sam Driscoll. <laughs>
Jack, it's all over. His manager's gonna realize what that right did to you. Do you hear me? Do you understand me, Jack? It's all over. His head. The weak spot is in his head, Sam. You got that? Banging on the left side of the head. You got him punchy. Work on those ribs. Keep him low. No, no, no. That's where he wants it. Get him on the left side of the head. The left side. Got it? I'm throwing in the towel. what he needs. To get himself killed, is that what he needs? He'll be dead, and for no other reason than his stubborn pride. Well, what would you do, Mrs. Barkley? I don't know. I don't know if I'd act any different. I just don't know. But I think it's wrong. You see, Mary, if you take away a man's pride, he might as well be dead. Your place is with him, Mary, no matter what. Jack, listen to me. Every time he throws a right at your blind side, he tips it. He steps out and back with his right foot. Now, Heath and I will tell you when to throw your right, because we'll see it coming. All right, now. When we say now, you step back and let go with the right. You got that now. Have you got it? Sure, do you understand that we say, now, you step back and let go with the right. Your fighter's got to answer the bell, mister, do you hear me? Remember that. Now, step back, let go with the right. Go on. I'll give you a bite of these. Come on, 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 come on,
you came back, Marie. If you hadn't, it all would have meant nothing. Oh, I could never leave you, Jack. Johnny and I will always be with you. You know, I've been thinking, as long as a man has some brains left, he ought to be able to use them for something else besides a target. You don't mind if I don't go and fight for the championship, do you? No. Oh, Jack. I guess I'm just bullheaded, honey. But it was a decision I had to make myself. Well, they've got me some money now. I guess I'll try something else. What, Pop? Well, I don't know. But we'll do all right, son. You ever think about being a farmer? Farmer? Uh-huh. Put about half of that stubbornness of yours into being a farmer, and you might wind up being a very prosperous man. Say, isn't that place down by Frenchman's Creek still available? Sure is. And from what they're asking, it could be quite a bargain. Well, maybe you got something there, cowboy. See you later. See you, Tooth again. Oh, come on, I'll buy you a beer. Whiskey. Oh. Go in the dentist and have him yank it out. Well, maybe it don't have to be yanked. Well, then what's it ache for? Well, this bad weather always sits in that bad tooth. Well, now look, we're here. It won't take but a minute to go in and have it yanked out. Now, where are you going? I'm going over here to get some toothache medicine. the same. How's it feel? Mm. Well, now that the whiskey's got it numb, won't you go have it yanked? You won't feel a thing. <laughs> yeah, you gentlemen look in the prime of life and physical fortitude. Now, how'd you like to earn an easy five dollars? Doing what? Practicing the manly art of self-defense. Test your strength and prove your skill. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, the Boston Terrier. There. Which one are you? Well, me neither. Terrence O'Rafferty, manager and trainer of Jack Kilbane, who once stepped into the ring with the immortal John L. Sullivan. Really? Yes, gents. The fight of the century, sponsored by the Stockton Club at $50 a ticket. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, bare knuckle, fight to the finish. Oh, it'll be the biggest private boxing match ever held west of the Mississippi. Marcus of Queen Valley rules. That's no gouging or biting or yeah. kicking, eh? Now, 
There are any men among you that would like to earn five dollars as a sparring partner. And the first man that stays three rounds with Jack Kilbane wins this here gold piece. Eh? Oh, now, surely there must be some among you that have done some fighting. Hmm? You can't all be lacking in the qualities of manhood. There you go, Nick. You get your tooth knocked out, earn five dollars, and save a trip to the dentist. <coughs> Heath, when are you going to learn you're not funny? Oh, he talks. <laughs> and I thought your friend was deep and dumb. No. <laughs> Give me another shot. How about that, Nick Barkley? You're always stomping and throwing your weight around. Well, now, why don't you mind your own business, Jonas? You just happen to be a little bit sore because I fired you off the ranch. Will I do the same thing again if I ever see you put a club to a horse? And don't you ever forget it. Ooh. Now, here's a man offering you a fight. How about it? Oh. <laughs> it, 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 it. <laughs> Didn't want to start no arguments. <laughs> if Stockton doesn't have a man, to go three rounds with Jack Kilbane, I'll just keep me gold piece. <laughs> we'll send to Sacramento for some men. Well, I guess it's up to me, Nick. Where'd I sign up? Well, now, what do you want to do that for? What do you want to fight for? I'm just a box on the army. What do you get for it? You get your brains knocked in while some Yahoo watches. Well, it might be a shame to turn the man down. People might think there ain't no pride here in Stockton. Pride? Besides the idea of a Barkley knocking out the great Jack Kilbane, that kind of tickles me. Right here? Mm. Now, wait a minute. If anybody's going to fight in this family, it's going to be me, Nick Barkley. Oh, fine, fine. I'll see you at Brown's Warehouse in 20 minutes. <laughs> Well, this bad weather always sets in that bad tool. Well, now, look, we're here. It won't take but a minute to go in and have it yanked out. Now, where are you going? I'm going over here to get some toothache medicine. The same. How's it feel? Mm. Well, now that the whiskey's got it numb, won't you go have it yanked? You won't feel a thing. <laughs> yeah, you gentlemen look in the prime of life and physical fortitude. Now, how'd you like to earn an easy five dollars? Doing what? Practicing the manly art of self-defense. Test your strength and prove your skill. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, the Boston Terrier. There. Which one are you? Well, me neither. Terrence O'Rafferty, manager and trainer of Jack Kilbane, who once stepped into the ring with the immortal John L. Sullivan. Really? Yes, gents. The fight of the century, sponsored by the Stockton Club at $50 a ticket. Jack Kilbane versus Sam Driscoll, bare knuckle, fight to the finish. 
Oh, it'll be the biggest private boxing match ever held west of the Mississippi. Mark is a queen, but it all. That's no gouging or biting or yeah. kicking, eh? Yeah. Now, are there any men among you that would like to earn five dollars as a sparring partner? And the first man that stays three rounds with Jack Kilbane wins this here gold piece. Eh? Oh, now, surely there must be some among you that have done some fighting. You can't all be lacking in the qualities of manhood. There you go, Nick. You get your tooth knocked out, earn five dollars, and save a trip to the dentist. <coughs> Heath, when are you going to learn you're not funny? Oh, he talks. And, and I thought your friend was deep and doom. No. <laughs> Give me another shot. How about that, Nick Barkley? You're always stomping and throwing your weight around. Well, now, why don't you mind your own business, Jonas? You just happen to be a little bit sore because I fired you off the ranch. Will I do the same thing again if I ever see you put a club to a horse? And don't you ever forget it. Ooh. Now, here's the man offering you a fight. How about it? Oh. It, 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 it. <laughs> Didn't want to start no arguments. <laughs> if Stockton doesn't have a man to go three rounds with Jack Kilbane, I'll just keep me gold piece. <laughs> we'll send to Sacramento for some men. Well, I guess it's up to me, Nick. Where'd I sign up? Well, now, what do you want to do that for? What do you want to fight for? I used to box on the army. What do you get for it? You get your brains knocked in while some yahoo watches. Well, it might be a shame to turn the man down. People might think there ain't no pride here in Stockton. Pride? Besides the ideal of a Barkley knocking out the great Jack Kilbane, that kind of tickles me. Right here? Mm. Now, wait a minute. Anybody's going to fight in this family, it's going to be me, Nick Barkley. Oh, fine, fine. I'll see you at Brown's Warehouse in 20 minutes. Mm. 